Hello, lovely learners. How are you all doing today? I hope you are doing well. We thank God. It's yet another opportunity for us to meet and continue with our virtual learning. I hope you are taking good care of yourself and you are making sure that you obey the simple protocol of the pandemic so that you don't contract the virus. Because when you contract coronavirus, it's going to affect your respiratory systems and thereby making it difficult for you to breathe or to respire. And this will send you to your grave very early. And so I'll continue to urge you to make sure that you are safe and you wear your face mask and the other protocol as well. Now today, as you can see from or on the board, you can see that we are looking at the respiratory system of human or organisms. And this is JHS1 Science, and I'm still your master, Mr. Samuel Yaboa. Now, this is what we are going to talk about today. I'm going to learn something under respiration. So I'll always say we need to respire to inspire before you are inspired. Because as human beings or as living things, definitely these are some of the life processes that will definitely come across or we may experience. And as you know, everything that has a manufacturing date certainly has an expiring date. And therefore, we need to respire to inspire and also before we are expired. So we are looking at respiration, we are also be looking at the equations, connecting respiration. We are also going to talk about the need for respiration and we we'll also talk about the respiratory systems of organs of animals in which human beings are also one of the organisms under animals or we belong to the kingdom animalia which means that we are part of animals, but we are the higher animals. We are also going to look at some table of organisms and their respiratory uh, organs as well. And you know always we are expecting to achieve something at the end of the lesson, and therefore I'll continue to urge you to pay attention to this very video so that by the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the term respiration. And two, you should be able to write the chemical equation connecting respiration or for respiration. And third, you should be able to outline the need for respiration. And last but not least, you should be able to list some organisms and their respiratory organs. So this is what I'm expecting you to achieve at the end of today's lesson. Now to proceed with what is respiration. You all know that respiration is one of the life processes and some of the life processes include feeding. We have reproduction, we also have movement or locomotion. We have excretion. And growth as well. So these are life processes. So today we are looking at the respiration aspect of the life processes in humans or animals. So respiration is a process by which oxygen or air is taken into the body to break down food substances such as glucose to release energy in the body. Once again, respiration is a process by which oxygen or air is taken into the body to break down food substances such as glucose to release energy from the body. So remember that one of the life processes 
in the body or one of the activities that takes place in the body is digestion. That is the breakdown of food substances. It means that respiration is very important because it leads or helps in what? Digestion of food. Now, carbon dioxide and water are produced as byproduct of respiration. Also, the oxygen taken into the body is used up by our cells to produce energy. Now, let's look at the equation of respiration or equation for respiration. Now, we have the C6H2O6 plus or combining with C, sorry, 6O2 forming. 6 CO2, that is carbon dioxide plus 6 H2O plus energy. Now these are elements, chemical elements or compound. Now C6 H2O6 is glucose, that is simple sugar. You know the food we eat digest into this uh, product, that is glucose, especially the carbohydrate aspect of food, that is the starchy food, they break down to form glucose, or they digest to form glucose. And as air enters the body through the various channels of respiration of the respiratory system, the air mixes with the food here, which is the glucose, or it combines with the glucose here to break it down or to digest it in a soluble and absorbable form. So we have the glucose, which has a chemical symbol or formula C6H12O6. Now the numbers here, which are the subscript here, represent the number of atoms or particles which combine chemically to form the various food we are talking about here. NO2 is oxygen, that is two atoms of oxygen or air with the six in front, making the number of atoms here 12 atoms. That is six times two, making 12 atoms of oxygen, which is the air or the natural fresh air which we inhale into the body to break down these food substances in order to release out carbon dioxide. So that is CCO2 plus water and also energy. This means that the food we eat, when air enters and it combines with it, the end result is also what? Energy. So this is the chemical equation for respiration. Now why the need for respiration? Why is it so important that as living organisms we need to respire? The need for respiration is simple. You know the energy needed by cells is stored in the form of chemicals in food that we eat and is only made available to the cells of the body during the process of respiration. And therefore, without respiration, all the cells of the body system would ultimately die and no body can survive or no organisms can survive with, without your cells functioning. Example of cells, we have the blood cells. We also have various cells in the body, the nervous systems or the nervous cells which helps the human being or animals to survive. So with that respiration, the cells of the body will not survive. And therefore humans or animals will also not survive. And that is the need for respiration. Now, before air can enter the body or before air enters, it needs some 
organs or some passage or tubes. So we have the respiratory organs here, which air enters or passes through in order to continue with the process of respiration. So we have the respiratory organs, which are the structures, the structures used by organisms for respiration. They are the structures used by organisms for respiration. Now when we say organisms, organisms we are referring to living things such as man or human beings and also animals. Plants who can be considered as organisms. But here we are talking about the animals in which human beings are also a member of the animal kingdom. So respiratory organs once again are the structures used by organisms for respiration. Now let's quickly look at the human respiratory system here before we come to the table of organisms and their respiratory organs. So as you can see we have this structure here which indicates the various parts of the respiratory system. We have the nasal cavity here, we have the nose, we have the mouth, so the air or oxygen passes through the nose or some can also pass through the mouth. But the majority or most of the oxygen which is used for respiration passes through the nose. Then this is connected, we have the mouth which is connected here to the windpipe or the trachea. So air passes through this pipe, which is the trachea. We also have this, the throat, uh, the throat or the pharynx, which is connected to the windpipe or the trachea. And in the trachea we have another pipe, where, pipe here, which is the bronchus. So the bronchus is a branch of the windpipe or the trachea. And when you come down here, in the bronchus, we have branches or smaller uh, tubes which also connect to the bronchus. And this is known as the alveolus or uh, the bronchial and the alveolus, which leads to or which connects to, to the bronchus. So air passes through this uh, part. Now we have here, we have the lungs, which I want you to pay attention to. This lungs, we have to, we have the left and the right lungs. So the left lungs and the right lungs is a very soft tissue in the body, which is located or situated in the stomach. Or uh, before the stomach, this lungs is there to exchange gases, and that is oxygen and carbon dioxide. So this is a chamber which exchanges gases, that is oxygen and carbon dioxide. And we have the ribs here which protect the inner organs of the body, because the organs are very soft and therefore they need protection. So we have the ribs which are very strong to protect the inner part of the, or the inner organs of the part of the human respiratory system. So this is the respiratory system of human or human being. Thank you very much. Now let's look at some organisms and their respiratory organs. The organs are the ones that they use to exchange gases. So quickly we have mama. When we talk of mama, there are organisms that give birth alive to babies. Organisms that give birth to live babies. Example, we have man monkeys. There are other organisms, they lay eggs before they are able to reproduce or produce babies. But we are talking about mammals. So example, man, monkey. They use the lungs to exchange gases or for breathing. That is the lungs. And that is the respiratory organs. We have fish, 
example, tilapia, salmon, and you can name the rest of the fish kingdom. And that one, they use the gills to exchange gases. So that is a respiratory organ for fish. We also have insects. Insects, example, mosquito, cockroach. They also use the trachea to exchange gases or for respiration. We have the spider and the scorpion. They also use what we call the book lungs to exchange gases or for respiration. We have reptiles such as lizard, crocodile, and the rest. They also use lungs for respiration. We have amphibians, example frog and toad. They use their skin to exchange gases. They can also use the lungs to exchange gases. They can also use the buccal bu cavity or the mouth to exchange gases. They use the mouth or the buccal cavity. So you can see that for frog or amphibians, they live on land and also they can be in the water environment. So on land, they use their skin, they use their skin to breathe. Then in water, they can use the lungs also to exchange gases and the buccal cavity as well. So the frog has what, three respiratory organs, and that is the skin, lungs, and the buccal cavity or the mouth to exchange gases. Now we have garden snail, which I'm sure you know garden snail or you've seen some before. They also use the lungs to exchange gases. We have the earthworm. They use the skin for exchange of gases or respiration. We have bed, which also use the air sacs and also the lungs for exchange of gases. We have a cow, they also use the lungs like human beings. We have elephant, elephants, they also use the lungs like human beings. And lion, they also use the lungs as human beings to exchange gases. So these are a few of organisms and their respiratory organs. So I'm sure you've been able to put down some key notes today. And I'm sure you've been able to achieve the objectives for the day. You've been able to uh, understand the term respiration, which is the process by which oxygen is taken into the body to break down food substances such as glucose or starchy food, which can be bamboo or the rest, to release energy. And note that carbon dioxide and water are produced as byproducts of respiration. We've seen the equation of respiration. We have looked at the need for respiration, importance of respiration, or why should we respire at all? As I told you, we need to respire to inspire before we are expired. This is where time will allow us to bring our lesson to a close. Until we meet again, continue to save, to stay safe. Bye bye, and God bless you for your attention.